One day at school, the maths master came in and wrote on the board, let i be such that i squared equals minus 1. And he had a revolution on his hands. For most of the lesson, we were shouting him down, saying, that's not true. They don't exist. You can't have a square root of a minus number. And he said things like, well, think of it as another dimension. OK, where is this other dimension? You know, show it us. We protested until eventually he quieted us down. He said, look, forget whether it's real or anything like that. Instead, just look at the mathematics. Let's work with it. And sure enough, as pure mathematicians, we found it was a coherent system. You know, you could do arithmetic with these complex numbers. That is a mixture of real numbers and imaginary numbers. And as a system, it was fine. And the amazing thing is, of course, beyond that, when you get to applied mathematics, you find that um, this really fits what happens in what we call the real world. That it, today's um, technology and science is almost entirely dependent on complex numbers, which are a mixture of what we consider to be real numbers and imaginary numbers. Now, I say that um, my subjective world is a mixture of what people call real and what they call imaginary. And it works. So, for example, um, if I tell people that a good way to learn gardening is to ask the fairies how to do it, or even to ask the plants themselves. So, you see, you might take a plant and think, well, how does one speak to fairies? Well, use your imagination. I'll go around with this plant, go around the garden, seeing how I feel. And if at some point it sort of feels different, I say, is the plant telling me it wants to be planted here? And if it feels that it is, do it. Now, I'm not saying this is better than any other way of gardening. I won't say that it's better than, you know, going to YouTube and getting the best advice from there or, or getting a book on it, but it is a very workable method of learning how to do gardening. And some people become very good at it, like the people at Findhorn, who produced a garden which other people said was impossible by listening to what the Davids said and planting accordingly. So if I tell people they should do this, they say, but fairies aren't real, they don't exist all the same arguments as we had about imaginary numbers. And I suggest, why not treat it like a mathematician? First of all, just work with it and see if you've got a sort of a consistent system here. And if it seems to have some consistency, then try it. And if you get good results, isn't that more important than whether it was real or not?